Hey, this is Bryce Harper, and welcome to The Philly Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Philly Show. Ruben Amaro Jr., Jim Salisbury, Todd Zolecki. It's Friday, September 6th, 2024. Ruben's in Miami. I was in Toronto this week. I flew home. Yeah, look at that. I got the palm trees in the back. Ruben, it looks like the weather is probably a little warmer than, than Toronto. It was gorgeous in Toronto this week. It was spectacular in Toronto. Loved it. Um, it is a little, obviously, a little bit more humid, but not, like, terrible. You know, typically around this time, man, it's, like, unbearable. But You're sweating bullets. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> nice little breeze to it. Sorry about, you know, some of the background noise, but, you know, they got – they got, you know, they got nice stuff going on over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waterfalls. Like, yeah, yeah, got the waterfalls going. Yeah, absolutely. I live, absolutely. live a tough life. I live a very tough life. <laughs> you live a charmed life, Ruben. There's no yeah, doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> um, I, I flew back yesterday from Toronto, and um, I, I got to sit, you know, you, you get back home, and uh, my wife was always dealing with the three kids and working full time and stuff like that. So I, I had some fun with her yesterday. Every time she'd asked me to do something, I said, you know, hey, listen, I got to recalibrate. I mean, I was I had to fly uh, internationally this morning to get home, you know, and she's like, it's an hour flight. What are you talking about? Get it done. So I about the eighth time of me dropping that out, she had had enough. But uh, I try to. <laughs> I try to keep it entertaining for myself as I get back situated with with the real world. Uh, Phillies win on Thursday night in Miami, five two. Uh, you know they sweep the Blue Jays. You know Kyle Schwarber has a tremendous week. And Ruben, one of my favorite moments of the week was, I want to ask you about this. Kyle Schwarber hits that go ahead home run in the ninth inning, and the ball was hit so hard, so fast. If you listen to the replay. I can hear you go, oh, but it's almost it almost happens instantaneously as the ball hits the bat. The crack of the bat times up almost perfectly. Like as soon as he made contact, you knew it was gone, right? It was majestic. You know, when he gets in those modes, when he's locked in and he's got that super great balance, um, almost every swing becomes must see TV. And for me, when he took that swing and as, as I almost sort of anticipated, I said, if he throws another pitch in that area, he's just going to clobber it. And, oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, it was like a – it was literally like an explosion off the bat. And yeah. uh, and the way he hits them, I mean, they're <laughs> they're beautiful home runs, man. <laughs> there are some great home runs. He's hit some bullets. He hit some – that was like a majestic one, man. It was like – and it was so timely, man. It was a beautiful – it was a beautiful thing. And I, I, just couldn't help, I couldn't help my emotion. I was like – Totally. I mean, I think everybody in the ballpark did it, but I, again, like I thought, I just thought it was so funny because your reaction was like, you knew it as soon as the ball left the bat, that that ball was going to be a missile. It was only, you know, I guess the only question was, it was going to be fair or not. It was obviously way fair, but, but uh, just destroyed it. When, yeah, when, he's you fun know, when, when you know, you know, when it comes off of his bat, man, when I think, know, you know, I think everybody did that. Larry Anderson even did it on the radio. He just, when he catches it just a little bit out in front, and he's such a – you mentioned balance. He's such a rhythm balance hitter uh, that when he is on and squaring it up and seeing it and feeling good and in a groove, he's incredibly fun to watch. And, and he, when you take the strength – I mean, he's an incredibly strong man and, and add that bat speed and you hit a ball on the button like that, you know, it's going to make a loud noise. And it's going to go a long way. And, and, you know, he he was in such a tough funk going into that game. You know, the lack, I think he had gone 17 straight games without a home run or, you know, 15, 16, 17 straight games without a home run. He, he, uh, he sat in the cage following Saturday night's game in Atlanta. He was really frustrated with how he was hitting. He talked through some things with the hitting coaches, worked on some things Saturday you know, the last at bat he hits this hard line out to center field and talking to Rob Thompson on Tuesday, he's like, yeah, I think that's a good sign. You know, you, I really like that at bat to me, that says something. And you kind of file that away. Right. You know, Jim, when you're writing a story, or you're thinking about stories for that night, you go, okay, let me remember that, you know, that, that line out to center field uh, to end, you know, in the ninth inning on, on, uh, on Sunday night. And then 
boom, lead off home run. You're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think then, that I also think that brings in the mental aspect of the game and the mental aspect of hitting. Uh, when you hit a ball on the button like that, that square one up, uh, it feels good and it brings you back to a good place in your mind. And uh, so, so often in this game, you know, the mind can lead the body. And I think that that has a, a, a big part of it. You know, it's like you finish with a good swing. You can't wait to get to the ballpark uh, the next day. It's like when you're a hack golfer and you have a good hole on 18, you come back. It's, it's, it's all kind of the same. Um, it's all kind of the same phenomena in your, between the years. Well, there's, funny, another, and there's another piece of that too, because for me, um, as a player and as a coach, and an ex-coach, um, when you try to implement something and you tweak something and you have almost immediate success, that's important. Because, like, say he was working on X on the balance or making a good choice with his swing or whatever the case may be, um, for him to, like, have that sort of immediately work for him and to have it, um, you know, have some positivity out of that, that's huge because then you can – then in your mind, you say, you say to yourself, ooh, that, all that work's sort of paying off, and it's paying off immediately. I'm getting immediate dividends, and then it kind of, then it kind of carries you through. Mm -hmm. you, Jimmy mentioned golf. Uh, Schwarber also said in terms of, like, state of mind, he played golf on Monday on the off day with some of his teammates. He said, I did not shoot well, but I had fun. And then later he got Tyreek Hill with the fourth overall pick in his fantasy football league, so he seemed pretty excited about that. So, <laughs> so. He had some good off the field stuff too to carry into Tuesday, uh, before he uh, hit those those three home runs and that th that dramatic win against yeah. against Toronto. So you, know, you, you talk about you know, again. I'll go back to what Frenchie said. You know when he saw that these guys were coming in and playing golf and being relaxed and how how much he felt like that that was going to be a a team that they felt that he felt like was confident and comfortable. And I think that's one of the reasons why Topper allows these guys to play golf and, and you know. There's some there's some managers who just basically say you know what shut it down you're not doing it uh, it's taking too much energy whatever I think I think that these guys manage it well enough and Topper gives them um, the leeway to manage it well enough so that you know they they're still having joy and being right. able to do some fun things while they're you know grinding through the season. It's a good it's a good outlet and you know it's, it's timely because we just talked a lot about that with John Smoltz on our last episode which. If you haven't listened to it, I would urge you to because I, I just think the guy is brilliant, brilliant. He's insightful, and he tells good stories. And he very uh, he knows the Phillies very well because he watches them. So uh, don't be afraid to cue that one up, right, Todd? Yeah, absolutely. We had he, 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 we had some fun with him. He told some great stories. I uh, still like the story about how Phillies tried to lure him to Philadelphia as a free agent by giving him some Marion and Pine Valley time. <laughs> Why not? Why yeah, not? Exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, one more thing about Schwarber. Do you think Phillies fans have finally warmed up to Kyle Schwarber being the leadoff hitter? Because I mentioned this to Rob Thompson on Wednesday after the game. I said, you know, we haven't really heard any griping about the leadoff hitter in a while. It's been months and months, really, maybe since opening before opening day. I haven't heard anybody bring up, you know, should he put Turner up there? You know, Schwarber's got to hit lower in the lineup. Maybe uh, people have finally accepted the fact that he's not half bad in that leadoff spot. Tied a major league record on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday with 13 leadoff home runs in a season. Tied Alfonso Soriano with the Yankees in 2003. It, it'll be a topic of conversation the next time they lose four straight. <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll never right. go away. It's a convenient uh, rainy day conversation. Uh, um, but you know, he's, he's very good in the leadoff hole. It's unconventional. I will acknowledge that, but before Kyle Schwar Kyle Schwarber arrived, they hadn't been to the postseason in 10 straight years. They targeted him. Kevin Long, you know, loved them from Washington and, and they believed he could lead off even when they were targeting him. This just didn't manifest itself in Philadelphia. And, you know, he, he's been here, and this is his third year, and they're headed to the postseason for a third straight year after missing it 10 straight. So uh, I think it's been a, one of the best signings in franchise history. And we will be right back. The summer gets super busy, and getting back on a good fall workout routine needs to be easy for me. 
With Anytime Fitness being available anytime, anywhere, they make it easy to work on getting stronger and more confident into my schedule. Kratz is spot on. It's got to be easy to make that routine happen. And that's why we love Anytime Fitness with access to 5,000 plus well-equipped gyms open 24-7. And this is not your average gym experience. They also provide personalized coaching support that provides members the best training, nutrition, and recovery guidance, which includes the Anytime Fitness app that generates personalized workout plans and tracks your daily progress. Get after it, FT fam. To claim your free Anytime Fitness trial pass, visit anytimefitness.com and get yours today. We'll also drop that link in the description of this episode. Check out more info and claim that free trial pass at anytimefitness.com. And we are back. And Jim, that's perfect timing because we just lost Ruben on the Wi-Fi. We just lost Ruben on the Wi-Fi. Maybe, so, he, maybe uh, he got arrested in Miami. <laughs> they just yanked him off. They yanked him off the computer and slammed shut. He's claiming Wi-Fi issues, but we, we will keep soldiering on. <laughs> He probably had to. He probably had a tea time. <laughs> the old my Wi-Fi is bad, Jim and Todd. I can't uh, finish this episode because he he plays more golf than anyone we know, and yeah, maybe more than John Smoltz. <laughs> Definitely more than me. Anyway, uh, you know what? It this this is also a perfect time to bring up. Them's Fighting Words, presented by Scheib Vintage Sports. Get unique throwback Phillies tees, hats, and sweatshirts from local artists at their shops in Center City, Wayne, and Westchester. And, of course, you can buy all their stuff online at ScheibSports.com. Jim, you're sporting some Scheib. What do you got, a Philadelphia Stars tee? Yeah, Philadelphia Stars 1938 logo. I love it. It's an awesome shirt. That is that is a cool shirt. I got, I got a, like a retro vet blue nice blue red white and blue vet t-shirt um this week's quote of the week i thought this was interesting because i know people have been talking about it a lot really the the last week this quote comes from bryce harper following wednesday night's game he gets hit on the left elbow with a pitch he's got the bad right elbow he's got a bad wrist sore wrist he's been bad he's he's absolutely banged up uh asked him is there any argument to be made jim for sitting for sitting him for a few days. Hey, we got Ruben back. Any, Sorry, any guys. That's all right. So we're getting into Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper had this quote. He said, I just don't know how good I'll feel if I take one or two days. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'll feel the same if I do take two days off or anything like that. That's a conversation we've had before, but I just feel like I'm going to feel the exact same if I do take two or three days off and I come back. In other words, you know, I'm going to keep playing right now, uh, and, and, and uh, I don't think I can hurt myself anymore. That was another thing he said in terms of his right elbow. On Tuesday night in the ninth inning, he takes a swing and miss. He grabs, you know, he, he winces in pain. Everybody goes, oh, my gosh, the elbow, the elbow. His understanding is that he cannot hurt the elbow any more than it already is. So he says, don't worry about it. You're going to see me wince in pain again in the future when I swing and miss, when I foul off a pitch. It's just the way it is. So um, what do you think about Bryce Harper kind of playing through this? Would you just say, I don't care what you say and, and rest him, or do you keep throwing him out there? You mentioned they've had a lot of conversations about it. I bet they talk about it every day. And if they thought it was the right thing to do, I, I think they'd, they'd do it. I, I don't know why they're backing off it. Uh, maybe they just feel like, you know, sitting him for 10 days and then having to start him back up again. Uh, because there is sort of that break-in period. And you know, he usually comes off the aisle with a great game, and then sometimes he cools a little bit. Maybe they just don't want to go through that uh, that period so close to the finish line here. But I'm sure he's in on these conversations. I'm sure they've done a lot of diagnostics on him, and they, they don't feel like it, it can get worse and play through it. Uh, you know, we we only hear the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I don't think rest is, is, is the answer. But um, I'm sure they've just done a ton of homework on it, and and there's there's more to it than that leads them to believe he can play through this. So uh, if they're good with it, I'm good with it. Um, you know, it's the same thing with Bohm. I don't know why they haven't DL Bohm or IL'd Bohm because um, you're at a competitive disadvantage. You're playing with a short bench every night. Now I know rosters is expanded, so it's a little easier to swallow. Um, but you know they. They spend a lot of time on this stuff, this this medical stuff and the sports science, and 
Um, I think this close to the finish line, you, you got to kind of trust them a little bit. So Paul, Paul Buchheit is there, uh, basically uh, runs their, their medical side of things. And um, he's super thorough. Uh, he's got a great background. Uh, I've known him since I was in Boston as a coach. They know what they're doing. And I, I just having seen uh, Bryce around, his spirits are great. Uh, I don't think it's bringing him down at all. I think that it's one of those situations where he just feels and they feel like it's not going to go uh, get any worse as he continues to play. So if that's the case, then he's going to continue to play. Now, there may be a point if they clinch, if they, you know, if they put themselves in a position to be, um, you know, to have the best record that maybe they can back off for a couple of days. But until then, man, he's too competitive. He's going to want to play. It's, these games are too important and he's, and he's too important to them and he knows it. And and they're tied again. They're tied again for the best record with the right. Dodgers. Tied with and the that's Dodgers. Because you know, we know what Citizens Bank Park can be like as a home field advantage, game six and seven, notwithstanding. Um, so you know, yeah, I don't doubt that once they're all signed, sealed, and delivered, he, he gets a couple days. But as far as shutting him down for 10 days, uh, it just if it hasn't happened already, it ain't happening, and I'm sure they right. have good reason for it. Yeah, you mentioned the Dodgers. They have the tiebreaker, too, against the Dodgers. So if the season ended today, the Phillies would have home field. So keep that in mind as you kind of follow the standings down the stretch. But And I, I will also say this about Bryce. I feel like in the past, he is somebody who, if he feels like he cannot play or is or feels like he can really mess himself up, he will, you know, kind of pull himself out. Or was not was it late last season where he, he DH'd quite a few games late in the season rather than play first base because his back was bothering him, or maybe it was the season before there was something going on where he was, it might've been, a, you know, he just was not a hundred percent. So he did not either play in the field or he did not play a few games because he was kind of worried about really messing himself up. So again, the fact that he says, I don't need to um, take a few days off to me says, says it all. I don't think, I don't think Bryce is not the type of person that's going to throw away the entire season by trying to be, Mr. Macho. Yeah. He's, he's he's probably just gearing up to do like a Superman act in the postseason, like <laughs> have a two home run game. Everybody's like, wow, he hadn't hit a home run in weeks because he was had a you know sore elbow and a sore wrist. And you know, he's Superman tonight. So who knows? The one thing who knows? one thing I've one thing I've learned about Bryce Harper is he's pretty much thoughtful about everything. Mm -hmm. And he thinks through a lot of things much more than any other player I think I've ever seen. Maybe Chase Utley, he he did that too, but he did it, I guess, more quietly. Um, and so, you know, uh, I trust his decisions. He's been around too long. He's been around yeah. the game too long. He thinks about this stuff way too much for him to put the team in jeopardy or himself. 100% there. Um, Zach Wheeler starts tonight against Edward Cabrera. Aaron Nola uh, Saturday night against Darren McCon. And then... An interesting little decision the Phillies made yesterday is that Seth Johnson, who they just got in the Gregory Soto trade, is going to start on Sunday in place of Tyler Phillips. Tyler Phillips goes out and gives up six runs in two thirds of an inning. I mean, you know, his last four, I think he's got an ERA of over 17. So they pull him out, they option him out, and Seth Johnson gets a start, which again is fascinating because they they traded Gregory Soto to get this guy and Moise, Moises Chasse, who's also throwing the ball incredibly well in the minor leagues. What do we think about Seth Johnson making his debut? That, that trade, it I mean, it depends how he pitches on Sunday, but man, talk about a trade that could pay immediate dividends who at the time, at the time you're thinking it's more of an addition by subtraction trade, right? You're just saying, get, 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 get Soto out of there. He's not happy. He's not throwing well, get him out. Boom. Seth Johnson could come up and, and really be a nice little, Nice little bonus prize. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to judge the trade on Sunday. You'd like to see right. him pitch well, uh, but you know, more importantly, they added a couple of good young arms to their system. I mean, Seth Johnson, former first round pick, first round arm. He's had, you know, he was slowed by the COVID season. He was slowed by Tommy John, but all indications are, you know, he's starting to put it together. And sometimes it takes guys time. I mean, there are many, many examples of that. So. Um, you know, Soto has gotten it together a little bit down in Baltimore. He's he's, he's rung up a bunch of zeros uh, lately, but 
he didn't want to be here. Um, and you can't have a guy who didn't want to be here, wasn't accepting of his role. And to add two good young arms, uh, I think it has the potential to be a, a hell of a trade. Uh, we know how important pitching is. And anytime you can add to your stocks with good stock of pitching with good arms, it's a good move. But you'd love to see the kid pitch well, um, establish himself. And, and pitching depth is so important and, and so needed in this franchise. Um, it would be great if he pitched well. It would be even even better if he comes to camp next year uh, with a chance to earn a spot on the big league roster or go to AAA and be that sixth guy that you know you're going to rely on at some point. So uh, really eager to see what he can do Sunday and uh, really eager to see what Zach Wheeler can do um, tonight because he is in a he's in a sprint to the Cy Young with Chris Sale, who dialed up another really good one yeah. against Colorado the other night. So I, I typically do not like moving players on your major league roster to to shift things around. But in this case, I think it's going to work out very, very well. Um, it was a little bit of addition by subtraction for Soto. Um, and again, I don't typically when you're in a hunt, you don't typically want to do that. But you're right about that, Jim. I don't think he wanted to be here, didn't fit. And uh, it was clear that that was the case. And if they can get something out of him that uh, becomes productive, that's pretty awesome. I'm um, obviously interested to see how he handles things on Sunday. But, you know, just like any other player, some of these guys just need a new place mm -hmm. to play. They need a fresh start. They need somebody who might get in their, in their head a little bit and give them a little bit different information that might help them click. Whatever the case may be, hopefully that's what's happened with this young man. And, you know, roll the dice because their fifth spot right now is kind of ugly. No one's really stepped forward. Allard uh, has pitched well in that in that role, but I think they want to give this guy a shot because he's pitched so damn well. Yeah, Allard, can, Allard is eligible to be recalled on September 10th. So I guess if, if Seth Johnson struggles and, and they feel like there's, you know, they, they, they have the option of bringing Allard back. But I guess if Seth takes it and shows well, maybe they just keep him keep him in that spot. There's, I think the fourth starter only has like four more starts to go this season. And then, uh, you know, so you can suck it up. For whatever. They're in good, really good shape. You know, you win the first, you, you win two in Toronto, you won five in a row, <clears throat> excuse me. You win the first one in Miami. Now you got Wheeler and Nola leading into uh, Johnson, really good shape going into the rest of this series in Miami, especially with Wheeler and Nola. I want to ask you guys, any concern about Ranger Suarez's significant and noticeable dip in velocity on Thursday night in Miami? That's a great question. I, I, I noticed that as well. It was down about, what, a mile and a half, two miles an hour, two miles an hour, right? I mean, it's so across the board. Yeah, across. So a guy coming off a back injury with, you know, they said it was a lower back injury, non-serious back injury and three starts in he's, you know, he, he struggled in his last start. The velo is down, you know, Rob Thompson didn't indicate he was frustrated or uh, um, concerned about it last night, but that's something you're absolutely going to watch down the stretch because you need him healthy. I mean, we're Ruben. What did you think? I mean, I know he was throwing the ball well, five scoreless innings. So you can obviously make that, that you, that's an easy argument to make. Like, yeah, the velo's down. He didn't have his sinker going, but man, he located the off-speed pitches were working. You know, he's not really a velo guy. No Rangers said that in the past. Anytime his velo's down, it's like, listen, I, I, I never have a good fastball. I haven't had a good fastball a day in my life, but I don't really need it. But down two from not net, from what his usual fastball is makes me, makes me wonder. Yeah, I was concerned when it was coming out of his hand in the first inning. There's no question about it, man. I, I, you, Tom Tom, and I were looking at each other in the booth going, well, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. It made me think of Vicente Padilla when he used to start games. And he was throwing like, you know, 89 miles an hour. And I had to call down like, what the hell's going on? Like, cut it loose, pal. You hurt? What's going on? Um, anyway, and then he started throwing 95. And he's a weird, he's a weird cat. Anyway, um, but that said, what? It did concern me early. Um, it does still concern me some. But the fact that I saw some elevation in that velocity as the game went on, that's a positive okay. sign. So it went sort of like from an 88 or 89 mile an hour fastball to somewhere around 90, 91 on the average later on in the game. Um, and he sort of maintained that at least through, what, 80-some pitches. Um, yeah, Is it a concern? Yeah, of course, because he's had some issues. Uh, he, I don't think he's hurt, 
Um, but again, I think part of it is a product of the guy just not having been on the mound. I mean, the mm-hmm. guy wasn't didn't throw any rehab games. It's different. Yeah. Um, he says you still have to get your sea legs under you. I know it's the third time he's throwing, but when you have that that long of a break and you don't have a, a actual rehab start, I know they did simulated games and all that stuff. It's not really the same. And I still he's, I still think he's working on getting his legs underneath him and his body back together to the point where he's 100 percent on the nose. Now you know he can pitch at 95 percent, obviously, especially against a team like the Miami Marlins. Because it's not a great team, um, but he did carve up the zone. It was that was that was a positive. He threw strikes. Uh, didn't look like he was laboring, and uh, and and that that's all a good sign. But you know you got to think about it. So you you know what I loved is I did love the breaking ball was down down down. I, I loved that. Um, it had really good shape. I mean, it wasn't you know it didn't have the velocity we've seen it but it was down it had good shape uh and it was in a good spot so i, I like that um excuse me i wanted ruben put your gm hat on for me and you faced these decisions throughout your whole career and, and todd and i covered them um rangers got one more year of arbitration be a free agent after 25 typically with a pitcher like that you, a front office would spend the off season and i'm sure they've already done it thinking about do they want to engage for a long-term deal? They may have already, who knows. But um, is that something, you know, you would do this winter or do you, do you want to see more from him, especially after uh, the bump in the road mid-season this year with the injury and whatnot? So I think, you know, as a GM, you have to go back to experience, right? And you have to think about what things, what, what has happened in the past, certain scenarios and certain things about the game that that are sort of absolutes i get really concerned about backs they're very tricky it's a really tricky endeavor i mean uh cole hamels happened to manage his back issues and did a really good job of it it was one of the reasons why we were okay with him going long term because he worked very hard at putting himself into a position to be fine with his back. He did a lot of core work. He did a lot of work, you know, whatever is necessary for him to have success. Now, Ranger, because he's had multiple back issues, uh, I got to be careful with that. And I think I'm going to probably let this play out through the end of the, uh, through the end of his uh, tenure here with the Phillies to make sure that this guy is, is okay with his back. Um, And Mm -hmm. I love the guy. I would, you know, Uh, Ruben my froze. mind that I, okay, that I would, that I would, uh, you know, go ahead in and and do a long term with him just because of who he is. But my issue is, you know, when you got a back issue with a pitcher or with any player, I think you got to be cautious. I'm I'm right on board with you. Um, yeah. I want to see more. I want to exercise some caution here. Uh, I want to see him get in great physical shape. I just want to see what 2025 looks like. And I would love to extend the relationship and have him be a Philly for a long time. I think he's a great pitcher uh, and a great guy and a great teammate. I just want to see a little bit more. And I think that's um, quite, uh, you know, level-headed and, and probably something they're discussing up on the uh, executive level. How do you kind of frame it up, Todd? Well, yeah, I, I think for me, like, it's a, it's a challenge for Ranger next season. You know, can you actually go from – point a to point b healthy an entire entire year it's not just the back he's had some other health issues over time i know that one spring he had covid and that knocked him out uh but but he had a, he's had elbow and and uh so i think like if you would sign him now or in the off season and you know something happens down the road you say man this guy has been hurt all the time for whatever reason and man you sign him to a long-term extension this guy has never been able to stay healthy so yeah I, I would absolutely want to see him get through an entire season healthy be productive and then do it i i don't think there's any rush and they, they have wheeler locked up they have nola locked up they have christopher sanchez locked up they have andrew painter coming down the pike so they have some they have some depth there they have some options coming so i don't think it's anything urgent where like man if you use, lose ranger suarez you guys are totally screwed going forward. So I, I, I think they can afford some patience. They can afford some patience with him. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, ho- hopefully he he dials it in and he gets his money and he and he stays because he's fun to watch, like he said. Yeah. So he comes to camp next year, totally motivated, and goes out and and has a Cy Young type season. But that's that's win 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 for everybody. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Exactly. John Middleton has shown that if uh, you know he'll reward guys with good seasons. So you know, it, yeah. it, 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 I think he would take that 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 that. Um, that universe where Ranger goes out and he goes, all right, guys, you didn't want to lock me up this last off season. I'm going to go out and win 20. Yeah. Then the area you're right above two. Fascinating little off season issue. I think. Absolutely. And I used to think of, of that whole arbitration process, which is sort of a necessary evil. Like if a guy got awarded, you know, whatever, whether we lost or won or whatever the case may be. I mean, I, I believe in performance and to be paid for performance. And if you perform, then you get paid and mm-hmm. that's the way it should be. And so if the man does perform, then he should be paid handsomely. It's as simple as that. Well, Ruben, with your crappy internet today, you're not getting paid because your performance has been shaky. No doubt about it. I suck. <laughs> my bad. This is a billion-dollar hotel, and I can't get Wi-Fi. I don't know what that oh deal my, is. Oh, my God. That could be a problem for us. Um, all right, guys. Well, we will be back on Monday to talk more Phillies. So uh, we had a good time. Even though Ruben crapped out on us a couple times, it happens. This is this is an internet based show, so there's. I mean, if, if I could behind the scenes, right? We've had some we've had some scary moments on here when we've had some guests on. Oh where I am literally dripping bullets. Cole Hamels, when he was on, he was cutting in and out, and I mean, the sweat coming out of my body was just. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna lose this whole thing. So. Uh, you don't have happen. to sweat for you don't have to sweat for me, Todd. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh I, I will say it because we don't know if Ruben can say it. Smell you later. Smell you later, boys. This is the Philly Show. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Philly Show wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel. If you like what we do, give us a review. Tell a friend. Catch Ruben, Jim, and me on Phillies Nation TV, presented by Valley Forge Tourism. New episodes air an hour before every Saturday Phillies game on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Replays air throughout the week and on philliesnation.com. Get more of Ruben's analysis during, before, and after Phillies games on NBC Sports Philadelphia, on the Sports Radio 94 WIP Morning Show, and MLB Network. Read Jim at the All City Network at allphly.com. Find more of me at MLB.com, the Phillies Beat newsletter, and occasionally on MLB Network.